There we got it. Okay, thanks. That was a Kickstarter. Hi, and welcome to this video. There we go. I know, I know. What I want to talk about in this video is breaking free from limitation. The limitation that's been placed upon us from our parents, from society, from the unknown control structures and also known control structures that we're not going to go too much into. But breaking free from limitation. And I want to share with you some of my own personal experiences of breaking free from limitation and how I was born into a lot of limitation. And that was very frustrating for me. I've always been a freedom bird and always wanted to be able to do what I want to do when I want to do it. And with the knowing in my my soul on a deep level that we live in a quantum world we live in a world where there are infinite possibilities I find limitation extremely frustrating in my own journey of breaking free from limitation I found a lot of different tools and techniques that makes it easier for me and for people to break free from limitation the limitation of our own mind the limitation of society the limitation of how we're supposed to live our lives so that we can become more deliberate creators because that is what we're all you know deep down wanting to experience is being our own creators of our reality a little bit about my <laughs> backstory of being born into limitation. I know it sounds a little extreme and everything is relative. You might say, no, that was a really good upbringing you had comparative to someone who were a lot more worse off. But in my own personal experience, it was very limiting to me in relation to my environment at the time. I grew up with very little. We had hardly any money. My mom was a single mom and she was suffering with a disease. So she was very sick and couldn't work. We had to escape from my dad who was violent. So my mom literally planned an escape route to take me and my sister over to another country to get safe. And her dream of creating a new life with her family, me and my sister, became destroyed when she found out that she was ill. She had no money, very little support, no friends because she moved to a new country, hardly any family members who were still alive. She still had to take care of her own mother who was becoming older and my grandma, bless her, which I love a lot. And yeah, two kids to take care of all by herself. And my dad wasn't helping at all. That's very limiting in nature and extremely hard for a parent to deal with. And as a child, I was three at the time we moved back to Norway, where I'm originally from. That was my environment. That was what I was born into. I didn't know anything else. So having very little money and living in extremely small, small, small spaces and just not being able to afford clothes. I have to wear my sister's old clothes when I went to school and I was bullied for that for a lot of different reasons. And that was my normal, just being in that level of lack and limitation, not being able to afford things, not being able to travel anywhere, not being able to get the things that I needed, not even just wanted, but needed. And just not having access to the same experiences that everyone else around me did. And this is not a boohoo, poor me story. It's just the facts of my upbringing. And it was amplified a lot because Norway is a country where there is a lot of abundance. It's very normal for people to have normal, healthy lives that are somewhat abundant. But there I was with my sister's old clothes and not being able to afford skis. Everyone's skiing and I couldn't even go skiing because I couldn't get the skis. Um, I was sort of like the odd one out. It's Yes, there are some levels of poverty in Norway, but it's not as much as other other countries. It was like being a sore thumb, like I just stuck out. My experience just stuck out because it was so contrasted by how everyone else was living their life. So the limitation was so highlighted to me. But as a child, there's nothing I can do about it. You know, when I'm six years old, I can't, <laughs> you know, snap my fingers and get a million dollars out of nowhere. If a six year old is able to do that, that is amazing. Just had to deal with it, just had to live like that until I was old enough to get out and start to make my own money and start to create the experiences that I want to create. But by the time I was old enough, I was so programmed by society, by my childhood. Even though my mom was extremely strong, you know, what I grew up with hearing a lot was that things were expensive, that, you know, even things like apples, like all these apples are really expensive, you know? So things were expensive, couldn't get things, life is hard, filled with struggle, lack and limitation, not being able to do the things that you want to do. So that was extremely frustrating for me. 
And once I was out of that environment, I had that programming in me. And it's not only from my childhood, it was also from society. There was all of these expectations of you need to look a certain way. You need to go get a job. You need to have a certain house by a certain time. You need to get a partner and a family. And I was forcing myself into that role. I thought, wow, now I'm going to follow this recipe of life and do this. But I noticed as I was playing out this recipe of life that was expected, that's expected of everyone, be a good citizen, go to school, get a job, you know, show up to work every single day and be a good worker, was suffocating me. I couldn't deal with it. My soul deep, deep down was saying, no, you're just a brick in the wall. This is not your soul's journey. And it is for some people. I'm not just poo-pooing on the whole system and saying, you know, the whole matrix story that that's really bad. It has its purposes for a lot of different reasons, but for me personally, it was driving me mad. And that's when I also became aware of that how limited I was in my own mind, because ultimately we create our own realities. It was hard for me to wake up to the reality that, wow, okay, if I'm to create my own reality. What am I creating here? I'm just creating reality with all of these belief systems that I picked up from my parents, that I picked up about money, that I picked up about life, and I'm just regurgitating this recipe that isn't even mine. So am I really creating my reality then, or am I just recreating these old stories that I've been told my whole life? Then I went on a long journey of self-discovery, of healing, of healing a lot of my own childhood trauma, and learning how to access the subconscious, because the subconscious is what dictates our reality. 95% of our reality is created by our subconscious. So I had all of these, you know, spider webs in my subconscious that are negative and limiting around money, around life, about my own abilities, my own skills that I really had to unplug from because they were not mine. And this is the deal with the subconscious. Most of people's subconscious are all templates, all programs that are put in there by society, by parents, and there are good ones. There are supportive belief systems that we pick up on when we're kids, especially if you have a healthy family. And if you have a healthy family, you have a good set of parents, good choice. Your soul made, soul made a good choice. <laughs> Every soul makes a good choice. I'm just joking. What I mean with that is that you have a higher chance of having some healthy programming. But if you're born into a lot of lack and limitation, most likely you get more lack and limitation programming that you have to deprogram. But again, at the same time, there's a blessing in that because the more you go into the darkness, the more limitation you go into, the more contrast you experience, the more of a possibility you have of going into the opposite. That's what I've been finding myself is there was so much lack and limitation in my life that I had such a deep desire to experience the total opposite, the utmost freedom that I can absolutely experience, the most infinite possibilities that I can create for myself, the most sort of different experiences that I could create for myself because I couldn't follow this narrow path. It was driving me crazy, like I said. So I have always been super fascinated about how far we can go with our consciousness, how far we can go with our skills, our abilities, our ability to create our own reality. So once I landed on subconscious reprogramming and learning how one of the most influencing factors on our reality, that's when I felt like I was like, here's a big thing. I don't want to say this is the thing, even though it can feel like once you've found something like this, it feels like this is it. But there's always plenty of tools out there and there's always plenty of developments and there's always plenty plenty of new uh, tools that come in that I'm staying open to always. My path have always continued to evolve and it always will because I'm always learning new things. But I have found that subconscious reprogramming is an extremely effective way of changing your reality fast and it's simple. It does take practice, it does take self-awareness, it does take your willingness to look at yourself to take responsibility and to do a lot of healing but it's in the healing where you, the transformation happens so that's when also things really started to shift for me i have done a lot of other practices and tools and certificates and trainings and a lot of different healing modalities but subconscious reprogramming is one of the ones that i continue to stay strong with because it is very effective and the reason i resonate so much with this one is because it liberates us from the programming from the limiting beliefs from the structures 
structures that are in place that are slave structures that are programming us to follow life a certain way so that we can just obey rules and serve the system. We need systems in place, but we need to practice our discernment around which systems do I wish, wish to support, which systems are regenerative, which systems support life, which system supports Earth, our home, our planet. Earth is our spaceship in this universe. We really need to take care of Mother Earth and we need to take care of life and we need to learn how to take care of ourselves in a way that's supportive of the whole. And this is a massive shift that we're seeing now in humanity where things are really being really polarized, where there's a lot of destruction happening, but we need that destruction to take place for the new systems to come up. And the new systems are being created by the souls who are inspired to create new systems, new beliefs, new programs, new earths, new infinite possibilities, right? This is why subconscious reprogramming is very liberating because it's once you break free from the old structures, the old limitations. And when I say old limitations, structures and programs, I mean beliefs and there's lots of different beliefs. You can have beliefs around money, that it's really hard to make money and uh, you have to work really hard to make money and money is limited. And if you charge a certain amount from another person, then they will have less. There's this, if I have more, someone else will have less. You know, all of this stuff around money that just isn't true. Money is just a number in your bank account and money is being made all the time. And then there's relationships and love. You know, how we're supposed to, we've been programmed to how we're supposed to have a relationship with ourselves. And the way that we've been programmed to have our relationship with ourselves is extremely judgmental. Perfectionism and depression are two, you know, everyone has at some point experienced or are still experiencing some forms of perfectionism, some form of depression, some form of self-criticism, some form of self-hatred, which really erodes our sense of self and is not supportive of life. It's about reprogramming that so that we can have this healthy sense of self and be grounded in ourselves and rest in our true power. And that sounds like a vague thing, rest in our power. It's really common to hear these days, know who you are and tap into your divinity and tap into your true essence of who you are. It is true. We need to do these things. We need to tap into who we really are. But in order to know who we really are, we have to get rid of all the nonsense that is not who we are. And that's all the beliefs, that you're not worthy of love, that you're not worthy of attention, that you're not worthy of care. If you've experienced a lot of abandonment and neglect in childhood, that's the belief that we get programmed with. I was abandoned a lot as a child because sometimes my mom just had to go out and I was alone. So the belief that I picked up on in myself was that I'm not worthy of love and attention. So my mom was extremely loving and caring when, when she was there, but when she was not and I was alone, what happened to my mind? You know, I got scared and it took on beliefs that I'm not worthy to be taken care of. So there's a lot of these things that we need to reprogram in ourselves. If you've had any childhood trauma, which most people had on some level, there's self-worth issues that stem from that come that arise to the surface from that. And that will show up in relationships, that will show up in work, that will show up in all areas of your life. You know, how much you feel like you're worth to get paid, how much love and attention you feel like you deserve in a relationship, how much love and attention you feel like you deserve to give yourself. You know, if you have limiting beliefs around that, you will have issues coming up over and over and over again until you shift the belief around it. And once you shift the belief, reality has no other choice but to reflect back to you your new beliefs because 95% of our reality is dictated by our subconscious. So you become a victim to life when all of your, your belief program is negative. When all of your belief program is negative, that you don't deserve love, you don't deserve money, you're unworthy, then you will have an extremely negative life experience and you will feel more like a victim of life, that you're not empowered. But when you shift these things around to, I deserve money, I deserve a healthy, happy life, I deserve love and attention in my relationships, and you yourself start to change your own programming, be that, and reality morphs itself around to reflect back to your new beliefs because it has no other choice other than to do that, that's when you become a deliberate creator of your reality. Freedom, free from limitation. You can choose, you have choice. And that's the ultimate empowerment is when you have a choice. So this is why I'm very passionate about this topic because when I was in a lot of lack and limitation, I felt like my arms were chopped off and I felt like I didn't have a choice. Once we start to tap into being able to change our reality, then we have a choice. 
We can take responsibility for our reality. We can take responsibility for what we're creating and we can recreate and recreate and recreate and recreate. And you can test reality in different ways and start to experiment and actually start to tap into different timelines and to start to tap into the infinite possibilities that exist in this world. There's infinite universes, there's infinite versions of reality. Time is an illusion and there's just an infinite plethora of timelines to choose from, which is hard for the third dimensional mind to understand your mind is not really supposed to grasp that but your soul does your heart knows once you also start to tap into your heart consciousness which is also again a whole nother topic which i can make a video about that's when you also start to switch on a lot of your timeline shifting abilities so i just wanted to share with you my a little bit about my experience of my own lack and limitation story going into subconscious programming and for you to kind of relate with your own experience if you've had lack and limitation in your life and you felt limited because of that and you want to tap into being able to create your own reality and you want to tap into parallel timelines and create the life that you want then if this resonates with you i invite you to go deeper i invite you to investigate further i invite you to explore subconscious through programming either on my website or another website where i can show you the tools on how to go into your subconscious because the subconscious is not accessible well until we learn how to access it and until we learn how to change it so that's what i do with my sessions with my clients so this is you know the purpose of this video is just to share with you my story but if you do want to go deeper go to my website and have a look and see if it resonates with you but if anything i hope i've just inspired you to go deeper within yourself, to have a look at your own programming, look at your childhood, look at your life. How have you been programmed by society to think a certain way, to be a certain way and tap into your heart. How do you really want to live your life? Who do you really want to be? Who do you really want to show up in this world? What are your passions? What are your dream desires? And start to feel into those realities because you can collapse those realities into matter. So everything exists one little tangent here before I, <laughs> just a mini one before, before I let you go. <laughs> All realities, and this is not me just making it, woo -woo, you know, this is scientifically proven. Nassim Harayim is a scientist that you can Google and look up if you want to get the scientific proof behind this. So you know that it's not just me making up stuff, but he is a quantum physicist and has a lot of research around this. But what I want to say to you over the infinite realities that exist is that everything exists as a possibility, as an energy wave, as a frequency wave. And we are in one of many dimensions, and this is the third dimension. The way that things, energy, collapses into physical matter in this reality is with our attention. So with our observation of a certain frequency, that frequency collapses into the third dimension, into physical matter, or what we see as a physical matter. There isn't really any physical matter because everything is 99.999% space, but what we perceive in this reality as physical matter. It's with the awareness of your consciousness, an observer of a particular frequency, and I'm just highlighting frequency because a future version of yourself will kind of go, aha, that's why she highlighted frequency. So if it doesn't click now, it will at some point. <laughs> Trust me. Your observation of a particular frequency collapses it into the third dimension, into this reality. So you can experience it as your physical matter reality. So just let that land, just let that sink in. And remember that when you go to sleep, when you start to daydream, when you start to think of what alternate realities that you want to experience, and just start to have fun with it. So I'm just going to leave you with that. But if you have any questions, just let me know. Make a comment on this video. Send me an email. Send me a message on Instagram, on here, wherever. I absolutely love hearing from every single one of you. I really appreciate your personal messages and also your public messages. If you have any questions, let me know what you want the next video to be about. Do me a favor and like this video. It really helps me to make more and I will see you in the next video.